For three weeks now, I've been talking about storms and about getting through these storms in your life, no matter what you're going through, that God wants to get you out of them. And the title has been, Where Were You Headed Before the Storm Hit? Where were you headed before this storm hit your marriage, your body, your life, your finances, whatever it is? I want you to think like a pilot thinks when he encounters those storms. His goal is to get to where he was headed before the storm ever hit. Get to your original destination. You know, storms can come out of nowhere. I mean, you can just be going along and all of a sudden a storm hits. I know even when I was in college in Lubbock, Texas, we would have the craziest storms just hit out of nowhere in West Texas. And I'm not kidding when I tell you this. One morning I woke up to rain. I mean, it's just drizzling, sprinkling rain. Next thing you know, I drive to class, get out of class, and a sandstorm hit. And if you've ever been in a West Texas sandstorm, it is creepy. I mean, the whole sky lights up orange and there's just sand everywhere. You're like your car turns orange. Then a thunderstorm hit and with the thunderstorm came hell. So it's hailing and me and my roommates are trying to get to our apartment as fast as we can. The hell's hitting. I am not kidding you. Then it started drizzling like frost, like it was um, snowing, just little bits of drizzly snow. We're just freaking out. Then next thing you know, snow's gone and the sun comes up. (laughs) This was in one day. You call my roommates and ask them. I'm serious. And we were going, what is going on? Is the rapture happening? And why are we all still here? (laughs) It was the creepiest thing, but it was like every kind of storm in one day. Well, I don't know about you, but I've been through that in my own life where a storm hit It felt like every area of my life. And you're just going, God, what do I do? Well, I mean, I've been through storms. I've been hurt. I've been abused. I've been rejected. I've lost a baby. I've been separated. I've been through, the list goes on and on. So many different storms in my life that try to make you feel absolutely hopeless. And you seriously feel like when you're talking to God, you're talking to the ceiling. Because where is he? Lord, please get me out of the storm. Well, when you find something that works, you want to tell everybody. And I have found the solution to getting through the storms of life. You know, I've heard the phrase that they say, um, it only takes one diet to lose weight. Which diet? The one you stick with. (laughs) If you stick with one thing, stick with what works, you're going to see changes in your life. So many times, it's not that we're not doing the right thing. It's just that we're not doing it long enough to see changes in our lives. Well, when you're going through a storm in your life, number one, never lose touch with God. You have to spend time talking to the Lord. Whether you feel like he's there or not, I want you to know he's there and he's listening. And he hears everything that comes out of your mouth. Not only that, he's there to deliver you. So never lose that time with God. Schedule your time with God. Get really disciplined with it, where if it's 10 minutes a day, you can devote to time with God, do it, but do it day after day after day. Next, you need to spend time with other people who will build you up. And if you say, I don't have any good Christian friends who will speak the word, then get CDs and listen to other preachers speak the word and build you up. Um, Another thing is you need to stay in the word. Stay in God's word. His word is your manual for you to get through this storm. You know, when I was going through a storm in my life years ago, um, a really bad storm, I remember just having a vision every day to spend time with God as soon as I woke up. And I would go out walking and spend that prayer time just talking to the Lord about everything that was on my mind. I'd cry during those walks. I would pray in the Spirit during those walks. It's dark outside so nobody could see me. (laughs) I would just talk to Him about everything, even those things that I was embarrassed about. I would talk to Him about it. Then my other vision was to hear the Word for one hour every day. So I would listen to the Word while I was getting ready. Then I had another vision to speak the Word out of my mouth because I had discovered that when you speak the Word of God, That is you picking up your sword of the Spirit and attacking Satan, just stabbing him every time you speak the word. So I remember getting word, and I still do this, but when I first began to do this, I would go home at lunch and get scriptures out. 
I already had it planned so during my lunch hour I could walk around my house speaking the word of God out of my mouth because the Bible says that God's word will not return to him void. In other words, when you speak the word back to the Lord, you're holding him to it. And you're saying, Lord, you said in your word you would do this for me. So I'm trusting you with it. You know, that's like my daughter. If I tell her, I'll I'll buy you a new outfit for the party you're going to. Well, she's going to tell me, Mom, you said you'd buy me a new outfit. She's going to hold me to it. Well, that's what you do when you speak the word out of your mouth. I want you to listen to Psalms 91 from this version of Psalms Now. And imagine you speaking this back to God. This is what David wrote. He said, those who focus their faith on God, who find their security in him, do not have to live in fear. This is you saying, Father, your word says, if God is truly your God, you don't have to be afraid of the enemy that threatens or the affliction that lays you low. Men and women all around you may fall, never to rise again, but the Lord is by your side to raise you to your feet and to lead you to ultimate victory. You can say, Father, your word says, because my children love me, I will never let them go. I shall feel the pain of their wounds and bear their hurt and shall transform that which is ugly into that which enriches and blesses. You can say, Father, your word says that when I cry out in agony, you hear me and you answer me. You will be close to me and you will deliver me and grant me eternal life. I would do this day after day after day. Just confess the word back to the Lord. And I'm telling you, things will change. Because just like this scripture says, God feels your pain, he hears your cries, and he's close to you. And he doesn't want you to get through this storm alone. He doesn't expect you to. You're not going to survive it without him. So you might as well depend on him. So I want to encourage you this month, get the word and speak it out of your mouth. And listen to messages. Get this new message on where were you headed before the storm hit. And do like I did. I had a message just like this. And I would play it in my car. I'd play it in my bathroom. I'd play it in the kitchen over and over and over until I was convinced God's going to get me through this storm. So my prayer for you is that same thing, that you're going to come out of this storm stronger than you've ever been in your life. Just like those three Hebrew children, without even the smell of smoke on your skin, you're going to come out better. So I encourage you to get this message and let it encourage you. Thank you for joining me this month, and I'll see you next week.